When Kanye West somewhat cryptically sang on his Dunder album, Junya Watanabe on my ri, uh, the internet, by which here I mean the world, uh, kind of collectively said, my what the hell am I wa? So I thought it would be interesting to have a look at what that line means and who is Junya Watanabe and his relationship with Kanye. So Watanabe is a fashion disruptor, I guess you could say. He makes um, uh, fashion design clothing that is so functional that it actually becomes radical. In his work with Japanese fashion label Comme des Garçons, he's uh, consistently taken what he refers to as uh, dumb, dumb clothes uh, by which he means things like denim and um, trench coats and t-shirts, basically everyday kind of stuff, and sort of twists it or transforms it in, into something unexpected. And he does it in ways that are kind of counterintuitive but logical. So he's born in 1961, which makes him, what, about 20 years older than Kanye. And he went to the prestigious Bunker Fashion College. Uh, and not long after graduating at the age of 23, he got an entry-level job at Comme des Garçons. Early on, he was influenced by Pierre Cardin and Issey Miyake. And Comme des Garçons founder Ray Kouakobo kind of took her under, um, took him under her wing and saw him as being someone that had potential to be, to become a force in fashion. So Watanabe did so well with, at the, at the company that he soon had his own, um, fashion line under his own name that was still under the, the umbrella of Comme des Garçons, but is, is called Junya Watanabe. So he started his line in 1992, initially just doing uh, women's clothes and using materials with things like flannel and tweed and plaid. And finally, his first real breakout uh, exhibition of his clothing was called Function and Practicality. So not the most sexy uh, uh, fashion kind of title you, you could imagine. And his work didn't so much uh, take fashion and make it meet with function as much as grind it into the ground and strangle it. So what was initially, you know, clothing that was quite recognisable became unrecognisable unre when it became reversible or you would make it waterproof or it would be recombined with something from another context. His aesthetic was pretty much undeniable. So in 2001, he became the head of um, Comme de Cassandre, or the, the head des designer. And from there on, he was very much one of the main people in control there. He launched a men's line and his obsession with functional and everyday things and recontextualized recontextualizing things fitted in well with the rise of this sort of streetwear culture um, that was taking fairly everyday clothing but sort of raising it to the level of of high art or high high fashion I suppose and this trend in fashion sort of paralleled once again an even larger movement within society for um, conspicuous consumerism and um, really sort of deifying this idea of being successful and wealthy maybe having come from a very humble beginning and you know a, a, like a lotus from the the mud achieving this kind of transcendence in particular in the the hip-hop music scene music went from being about you know being in the ghetto to being uh, living in luxury and really sort of worshipping at the altar of this conspicuous consumption all of a sudden you didn't just want a baseball cap you wanted a baseball cap that was you know lined in 24 karat gold so you wanted street cred but you also wanted an element of this old world european prestige you wanted high top kick boots but you didn't want high top kick boots that anyone else had it had to be something that no one else had access to it was either too expensive uh, it was either exotic or from some um, label that people didn't really couldn't be part of you're trying to set yourself apart so junior's work really fitted in well with that because it, it ticked all the boxes of being functional but also prestigious and also exotic in that it linked both with you know this exotic Japanese culture but also um, European French it's got the, a French name so it kind of it ticked all these boxes so getting back to Junior Watanabe on my wrist is this talking about Kanye wearing a Junior Watanabe wristwatch and a lot of people have speculated that that's what it is if you look around there aren't actually any Junior Watanabe watches that are available it's not a product that you can generally buy so the rumors are maybe Kanye has his own um, his own custom watch or it's uh, it's something that people don't have access to at this point 
there are a lot of uh, Junya Watanabe um, wrist fashion things. I guess you would call them bracelets if you wanted to use a boring everyday term. You know, things that have plates of metal or kind of leather things. So maybe um, Kanye has has some of these. I don't know. Kanye has been into uh, Conde Casson's uh, work for quite a while and Junya Watanabe in particular. He often attends his um, fashion openings. But as far as I could find online, I couldn't find anything with Kanye wearing a, a, a Junya Watanabe watch. I could find him wearing What Would Jesus Do bracelets, strangely enough. But the idea that um, Junya Watanabe or Mari is is talking about a watch he is is kind of reinforced by the lyrics later in the song where he says god's time can't fit on a wrist pretty pretty powerful kind of line but yeah once again suggest a watch amen to that <laughs> 